Okay guys, um, just letting you know where we're at this week. Um, this is the second lot of recording that we're doing for what's transpired this week. Uh, I went into SEER Medical and had the attachments for the EEG and the ECG attached to me and I spent a week here at home um, being monitored with a portable video unit um, which was uh, recording sound and video to be analyzed. I went and had it all disconnected on Friday morning. I'm early this morning to have all this gear removed from my head so I thought that I'd just do a, a little video here come near Story Bridge and um, uh, just have a look at this area. So I'll just turn around to give you a bit of an idea where I am. I'm just outside the Story Bridge Hotel. And so this is where we are. And uh, they will start assessing what was recorded over a 24 hour period for, it was 24 seven. It wasn't for seven days, it was um, for five days and four nights. Um, so, but still, it's a lot of data to assimilate and to come to terms with and come to grips with. So in the meantime, I've been watching documentaries while this was going on. And uh, the documentaries are whole food plant-based documentaries. Um, and I've learned a few things. I learned that uh, turmeric um, is really good for the brain as well as for um, the heart and the blood system. This um, disease that I have, the CM disease, um, will benefit greatly from that. And black pepper actually helps the body to absorb uh, turmeric at 700 times uh, the normal absorption rate. Uh, so if I have black pepper with it, much like vitamin C does to vitamin B. Um, if you have, or as the Americans would say, vitamin, vitamin B and vitamin C, um, where we come from, uh, the way I was raised, I guess, is where my accent comes from, vitamin B, vitamin C, so vitamin B, vitamin C. This uh, study that I've just completed will take four to six weeks to uh, get the results. They'll go to the neurologist, the neurologist will then uh, contact me, I'll go in and have a visit and we'll discuss the results and we'll see where we go from there. Um, the neurologist will then do a report that will go to my doctor, to my GP and I'll go and have a visit with her and we'll discuss what's going on there. So that's me done and dusted for this week. Veronica's not with me today because Veronica's been having a pretty horrendous couple of days, uh, yesterday and today. Um, this is uh, down to her CP, which I'm going to talk a little bit about um, today. And uh, that is... Uh, Ronnie was born, CP is um, cerebral palsy, it's actually a bleed on the brain, on the cerebrum and um, the weight of the uh, blood is what actually causes damage to the cells beneath and um, it, in Veronica's case it's affected her hearing, her vision, Veronica was born um, with her vision squint, uh, squint eyes, eyes both facing out and um, she's had numerous operations to correct that but you'll find now as she's getting older she's had to go back to wearing glasses um, for many years she didn't wear glasses just didn't need to but um, as we're getting older so our bodies deteriorate and so veronica's eyes um, you'll notice that the eye the left eye is starting to wander a little bit so she'll focus with her right eye and the left eye will be out a little if the left eye is focused you'll notice the right one's out a little and the more tired she is uh, the more pronounced the, that becomes. So, um, that's that. The hearing as well is uh, quite significantly impaired. So, Veronica, um, if she's not wearing hearing aids, she relies on sight um, and she lip reads. And she's pretty good at it. Um, so, this COVID thing and the masks that really inhibited her, and not only her, but anybody who has hearing impairment um, relies on body language and lips uh, reading lips so a lot of people have been really impacted by this uh, mask wearing thing which you know I'm, I mean I'm all for the masks if the science supported it the other thing that uh, was affected with Veronica was her speech so and it's because the muscles are affected so it's got nothing to do with intelligence 
nothing at all to do with intelligence. This is all motor skills. Um, I'm not saying that um, cerebral palsy doesn't um, uh, have an effect on uh, on intelligence or levels of retention and that sort of thing. It affects memory. It affects all, so all parts of the body. But um, with uh, cerebral palsy, with Veronica's cerebral palsy, she had no sense of balance. Um, she had no a sense of coordination. She can't catch a ball. Um, even a big ball she has difficulty with. Um, but she can't, you know, like a beach ball. Um, she can't participate in, in games like that. Um, she has played cricket with the kids when they were growing up. Um, she, if she caught the ball, it was pure luck. Um, if she was able to hit it when somebody bowled, again, that was, um, you know, it was odds on that she wouldn't, but occasionally she would hit it. So, but she enjoyed playing regardless, you know. She loved actually playing with the kids, um, playing cricket and uh, footy and uh, all sorts of things. So, she didn't let it stop her. And she actually did very, very well while she had the children while, um, while they were growing up. I worked shift work, so I wasn't much help in that regard. I worked long hours. Um, most of the time they were 12 hour shifts and very often um, it would take me two hours to get to the place that the shift was to take place um, in traffic and two hours to get home. So there wasn't a lot of time left for socializing or, or spending the time with Veronica and the kids. So I missed out on, uh, on a lot of things um, that way um, in the early days, you know. Once the kids became teenagers, things changed a little. Um, we'd progressed in the world. I'd moved up a little, a little bit. Um, I'd also done a lot of study um, at university level, um, distance learning at home, and so the, what little spare time I did have was spent studying. So, yeah, it wasn't an easy life, and, but we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. Uh, for now, we're just going to discuss um, Veronica and myself and the week that's just transpired. Okay, now the other thing with Veronica is her sense of balance riding a bicycle she can't do that so we have an OT um, occupational therapist that assists us with um, Veronica's needs whether she needs walkers or um, the like and Veronica is at that stage where um, a walker is coming in handy um, she doesn't like using it uh, she's very embarrassed with it She's very embarrassed talking on camera because of her speech impediment. Um, and the accent with the speech impediment um, at times has made life a little bit difficult. We find that most of the public are pretty good. Um, there is the odd one who doesn't want to hear, who won't hear, who won't be patient enough to listen and will get a little bit nasty. You know, she will get more confidence as time goes by and she will come in front of the camera. It's only because she's having a really bad couple of days that she's not sitting there having a go because she's that type of person. She will have a go, always. Okay. Yes, um, we had to go up to the hospital this week for Veronica's been having a lot of difficulty with her hands. She's got arthritis in the fingers, but uh, she's got trigger finger as well, and she's got um, carpal tunnel. And so we went up and we saw the doctor, and uh, he's decided that she needs surgery. That uh, there's no, and there's, it's better not to wait because, as I said, we're getting older, and the older you get, the riskier the surgery becomes. So let's not wait. Let's get this done now. Um, and he was keen to do both hands at the same time, and we said, "Whoa, hang on a tick." That's not a good idea, you know. So Veronica loves her independence. Um, she's trying to hang on to it. I do a lot for her and she gets angry with herself because I am assisting. So I try not to. I try to let her do her own thing as much as possible um, and prefer to wait until she calls me to, to help her. But sometimes I step in when I see that this is not going to work, you know. Um, and she gets very angry, um, which, which is understandable as well. It's very frustrating um, not being able to do certain things. So, taking away both hands would be a big mistake. So we said, look, let's do one hand um, at a time. We'll start off with the right hand because she is right-handed and I've been encouraging her to use her left hand a lot, um, which causes, um, as you can imagine, we have our blow-ups over it. So, um, but uh, we know that we don't 
mean it, you know, so some angry words get spoken um, and then we're seeking forgiveness from one another straight afterwards, which is the right way to do that, by the way, um, in my opinion, and um, uh, as the Bible teaches us, is where we shouldn't, um, and it's not, it's not anger at the person, it's frustration with the situation. That's what it is. So, yeah, it's very, very seldom that we actually get angry with one another. We usually get frustrated at the situation that we find ourselves in and voices get raised. Um, trying to get uh, the other person to understand where we're coming from or um, to be able to follow their instructions. And so, uh, but it's never worked. Raising the octave in order to get the same sentence across, it doesn't work. Let me tell you now, we have to change the sentence, keep the octave down, and that will actually get produce a better result. But anyway, I'm getting on and on and on and on. This was only supposed to be 10 minutes, so I'm going to call, bring this to a close now. We've said a little bit about Veronica's story. So until next week, uh, this is Pete for PVM, and for Pete and Ronnie, say bye, see you later.